Good morning, uh, this is Gilles, the uh, radio prepper at radiopreppers.com. It's freezing today, slightly below uh, the freezing point, a little foggy. Here you have a nice view of, a rooftop view of a small town in the north of France. And today we are going to talk about three items. Here we have the uh, Elecraft T1 tuner. We have the Chameleon uh, Hybrid Micro, part of the MPAS system, antenna system. And we have the uh, RT320 uh, military man pack radio. So we're going to uh, make them uh, play well together. And uh, this is especially about the Elecraft uh, T1 tuner. So let's get started. Here we'll start with the jar mount. The hybrid micro. And the whip. Oh, I forgot the counterpoise. As you can see, it's uh, very quick to install. That's what I like about this antenna. Here's everything assembled together. With the Elecraft T1, I placed it uh, near the antenna um, in order to avoid cable losses. You can see I have some ferrite beads here to uh, eliminate uh, common mode currents. So let's talk about why I chose the uh, Elecraft T1. So why did I buy the Elecraft T1? Well, after all I have a ZM2, uh, which is a great tuner, doesn't use any batteries, so but I needed a little bit more uh, power handling, so the uh, ZM2 can handle uh, about 15 watts. The T1 is given for 20 watts and 10 watts continuous, but it can take a bit more, so I wanted to be able to use it with my RT320, which uh, you'll see in a minute uh, on the air. Um, and, I mean, really, who doesn't like just uh, pressing on a button? <laughs> it's just being uh, a bit lazy. Um, there are two things, however, I do not like about the T1, and the first one is the price. It's fairly expensive. Uh, if you want it already assembled, it's about $175. If you want a kit, I think it's about $145. I got the kit. Uh, I was charged... Uh, around $45 uh, in taxes, of course, for importation to France, but mm, that's how it goes here. So uh, the other thing I do not like is the plastic case. It's a cheap plastic case and, and for the price, uh, I would have hoped to have a, a metal case. Um, not that it doesn't feel okay, but it's it's plastic and it's it's not very uh, rugged, so 
I don't like that very much. Um, but it's fairly small, you can see it here in my hand. Uh, it's a small tuner. So, um, the uh, advantage it has also is that it has a memory uh, so that if you tune on a band, uh, you can get back to that band later and uh, it will remember your tuning and it will be faster to find the uh, proper tuning. So, um, that's quite convenient because, of course, uh, while you tune, uh, your radio might see some uh, high SWR and uh, that, could, that could damage it. So, um, the faster it tunes, the better for you. Uh, it's recommended, of course, that you lower the uh, voltage of your radio, especially the, uh, the small uh, QRP rigs, to uh, lower the power and avoid uh, blowing your final transistors. We'll have a last look and then I'll plug it in again and uh, we'll turn on the uh, RT320 and try to make uh, some contact. This is for the, uh, the jack, here is for the uh, command cable, which I do not have. I use this uh, tuner also with my KX2, which could have uh, an internal tuner. I might buy one later, but I wanted to be able to use this tuner with uh, other radios. Oh, I turned it on. It turns off automatically, so... All right, let's uh, get it plugged in. So why would I use the chameleon antenna with the military radio that has its own whip antenna and, and working well? Uh, simple. I don't want to freeze my ass off today. Excuse my French, but yeah, it's cold. And uh, the uh, chameleon antenna allows me to uh, leave the antenna outside and I'm going to operate inside. Uh, you could do the same in a tent or, uh, you know, anything, but uh, it allows you to uh, move the antenna away from the radio uh, when that's convenient. Here the T1 is plugged in. Now I need to press the button. The only problem with uh, putting the tuner uh, at the antenna is that I have to run back to the radio and press uh, on the PTT button and uh, in order to tune. And uh, I have to be careful here because uh, it's frozen, so uh, I don't want to uh, take a fall, but uh, that's the one problem I have with uh, doing so. I could put the um, tuner at the radio, it would be much simpler, it would work, I'm pretty much sure, uh, as well with uh, the short uh, cable I have. But for longer coax cables, uh, I would say more than 25 feet, I would definitely suggest putting the uh, tuner like I'm doing here uh, near the radio. So uh, here we go, I'm going to press the button and then press the uh, CW key and uh, we'll see if it tunes. Well, I didn't see it so I'm going to do it again. And I heard it this time. I hope it's uh, it's good. Yep. Some people ask me, um, how do I power my RT320? Very simple. Uh, well, I, I do prefer to have the original uh, Klansman battery, but uh, I don't have one right now because a user on eBay, his name is Televo, uh, sent me a dud and didn't want to uh, replace it so uh, he lied about it and uh, uh, then I couldn't complain uh, to uh, PayPal anymore so uh, be aware of that user Televo T-E-L-I-V-O don't buy from that guy um, I have a LiPo 7S 7 cell pack here uh, which is uh, plugged in a, uh, well, let's look at the cable adapter here. This is a remote battery cable. It's screwed in the uh, RT320 here. 
the wire has Anderson balls. Look, you see them here. And of course, plugged into the battery pack. I use a uh, an RC type uh, battery alarm here. You can see that every cell, see number one, 378, number two, 380, uh, number three, 380, etc. Uh, it will go through the all seven cells and then show the uh, total voltage for the pack. Uh, every individual cell has to stay above three volts. Um, I did set the alarm at 3.2. Once uh, a cell reaches 3.2, that thing will scream, and uh, you know uh, you couldn't you couldn't sleep through it. I mean, uh, so that's really good because uh, if one cell goes below three volts, much below three volts, uh, you can lose the whole pack. So. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Fox 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Good morning, 59, over. Good morning, uh, this is Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Uh, you are about a 4 here, no S meter. I'm using a military man pack uh, RT320. And my QTH is near the town of Lille, Lima, India, Lima, Lima, Echo. My name is Gilles, Gulf, India, Lima, QSL. QSL, QSL, okay. I know very well, I know very well. Uh, because I'm 16 years in Portugal, I'm Bulgarian boy. And so much uh, time was in France. By the way, thank you very much for the nice contact. 73, Thank you very much. Uh, and I think we spoke before. Uh, I can recognize your voice. But uh, you have a happy new year and uh, maybe we'll chat another time. Uh, have a good day. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. And uh, it seems to work fine. I think I spoke to that guy before. I, I kind of recognize his voice. Uh, I, I would prefer to have longer conversations, but a lot of people uh, just want to put your call sign in their logbook and, and that's it. Um, it's too bad. I mean, we, uh, we fail to uh, communicate these days. Every, everybody wants uh, quick, uh, you know, quick contacts. Uh, I don't know. I, I would rather have a nice conversation, but that's just me. Uh, so you notice that I put the um, T1 back near the radio. It's not working as well as near the antenna. Uh, I get a little higher SWR. So it really, uh, I believe, is better to put the, uh, the tuner at the antenna uh, when possible. And uh, that's it. Um, I don't have much else to say. Uh, it seems to be a good combination. I mean, the uh, T1 tuner, the uh, RT320, and the uh, Chameleon MPAS system with the whip. I do have a 10 meter counterpoise there. It's a very short antenna. It's a compromise antenna, but it's very quick to set up and uh, it works. Um, it's not going to work as well as the uh, half wave and fed wire but eh, you know when you can't uh, use one like uh, like here you know on a balcony on the fourth floor um, having the uh, hybrid micro and the whip is really uh, <laughs> it's the only way to operate really so that's it guys uh, I really like the T1 it's it's a great tuner I wish it has a metal case it had a metal case but no and I wish there was uh, a little bit more of a delay uh, to uh, allow you to tune so that you can run from the antenna where the tuner is to your radio uh, before the uh, the timeout. So maybe uh, Wayne could uh, change that, look into it. I don't know, maybe the programming could be uh, uh, changed and extended here because uh, it's really not much time uh, from the time you press the button and the time you you know you have to press the uh, the key to tune so 
And I'm going to stop talking now because I'm going on and on. So you guys have a good day and a happy new year.